So you have to, you know, understand how to get into that, but this is what my background you is. You say right? it so casually, but that actually sounds kind of mildly terrifying that you can do all of this stuff to, to pretty much anyone's car. Well, I can obviously only do it to a car I have physical access to. I could also come and cut your brake lines if I was that kind of guy, but, there you, you go. know, I'm not. Welcome to Translogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. Since cars were invented, people have been heading to the track trying to figure out how to go faster than the next guy. But now that we're potentially looking at a fully autonomous future, could that be a thing of the past? Not likely. Welcome to the world's first autonomous track day. Obviously, an event like today's can't be organised by itself, and that responsibility has fallen on the shoulders of Joshua Schachter. I mean, Silicon Valley entrepreneur, you're a car racer. Well, we found ourselves here at Thunder Hill Raceway. Is it the world's very first autonomous track day? Uh, I think it is the first autonomous open day where, where many different teams from different companies and, and in, in fact, uh, garages can join us and try their vehicle. When we say track day, we always think of people going out, racing, competing for lap times, but today we're running a little bit different, aren't we? This, this is a kind of a calm track day where there's no racing. So track days are typically there are no timing. People are working on their skills, getting practice and, and doing stuff. They're not, there's not, it's not a race. Right. So yet. what is it exactly that we're trying to prove today? What I would really like to do is actually figure out a way to get the expense and difficulty of implementing the first vehicle down so that it's a few thousand dollars plus hardware and so I think uh, a diversity of opinion is actually pretty important on figure how to figure out what to do. George Hotz is the founder, CEO okay, of Comma.ai. Now, you're competing out here today, and I use that term loosely, but we are out here today experimenting, I guess, with autonomous driving. So your background, um, you were the first person to hack into an iPhone? Unlock. So unlock. I, I, other people did the first jailbreaks. The first unlock, it allowed you to use it with other carriers. Yeah, I had a lot of friends that, uh, that used your services, so thank you very much for that. Comma.ai, how did it all begin? Elon Musk was originally going to give me money to build this for his Teslas, right? And if yeah. I could make it drive itself without using the mobile eye component, yep. then I would get paid. Elon changed the deal at the last minute. Right. Um, said no, bought this car, and made it drive itself. You just made it drive itself? We basically show it how to drive. You take it out there, you log everything you're doing. Yep. And then it uses deep learning to learn basically kind of how to replicate what you did, but even right. in scenarios that it's never seen before. I'm here with Bobby Hambrick, who's got quite a big, uh, I guess, a big show today. You are the founder of Autonomous Stuff and the mm -hmm. co-founder of Polysync, both of which have a vehicle uh, on display here today. We're specializing in several things, but right now we're showcasing our automated driving research development vehicle. Yep. So it's, it's a vehicle that includes four major cores, and these cores are used for, for significantly reducing the time it takes to develop automation applications. Do you have a lot of customers for that? Yeah, so we have about 1,400 customers that are, that are from all corners of the globe. And uh, we've been providing technologies to these customers for enabling automation for almost a decade now. So you've got, what, actuators that are controlling the brakes, throttle, steering column? So example here is we're just doing racetrack driving, right? So we taught at the track. Yep. And this is an app that we loaded last night on the car. And then the car is now learning how to drive on the track and it's racing around as fast as it can go. How did you load up the optimum racing line? They had professional drivers here at this event. So we had a professional driver get behind the wheel, drove this optimum path. We were recording that data and then we simply took the same line that he did and ran it as fast as we could without a human driver. We're not at the level yet where these cars can race against one another, but is that the goal? I'm not trying to compete with 
motorsports in the same way. When I race Spec Miata, there's there's really no spectators there either, right? Yeah. People can try out new things in a less strenuous environment than you know the street with pedestrians and traffic and and that kind of stuff. I guess the end game is to eventually get these cars to a level where they can race against other vehicles. For us, it's about enabling automation. So it's not okay. about racing for us. It's about building modular based applications that we can we can give to the to the world of researchers. Okay. Do you see a future where we have driverless racing? I don't know that much about racing. I do see, though, in the future that for under $1,000, you'll be able to buy our aftermarket add-on kit. There's a small plug there, just a small plug, but that's fair enough. So that's the end game with you. So your focus is not necessarily to build a fully autonomous race car, but it's to, in a control environment, learn well, how to push this car to its limit. Exactly. If you can understand how to race, you can also understand what to do in a lot of like evasive safety critical situations, right? Yep. Uh, most people spend time commuting, yep. and when they're commuting, they spend most of their time on the highway in traffic. Gotcha. We're building the automatic commute machine. How do we make this a motorsport and how do we make this motorsport exciting? I think this is the first step, right? First, we gotta make, get the cars running safely around the track. And when it comes to yeah. interacting with other race cars, are we talking then we've gotta have software that's almost verging on artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence plays a big role in this. And you know, I think that's what we're all trying to explore here. And we're all collecting data on the racetracks to, to figure out what that next step will be. Do you see us ever having a fully uh, driverless car race. That would be fun. We have to make sure it's interesting, right? If it's just robots all driving perfectly, that's yep. that's not exciting. But I, I thought of a number of ways, you know, like yeah. imagine, you know, imagine a track with cross traffic or, I mean, there's all oh, kinds of things, right? So it could, okay, could be so obstacles. You know, I, I think we'll figure it out. Well, these cars might not be race ready and driverless racing might still be a ways off, but as is often the case, what's learned out at the track tends to find its way into our garages at home and that's what makes these events so valuable. For TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.